Hello students, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to talk about measurement of intelligence. The main object in this lesson are to understand how intelligence is measured. We will also understand the concept of intelligent quotient that is IQ. We will discuss what are the various types of intelligence tests and what are the negative consequences of intelligence testing. Intelligence has always been an important topic in the history of psychology. In addition to the questions of how to exactly define intelligence, the debate continues even today about whether accurate measures are even possible. When you want to know how intelligent a person is, what will you do? Generally, we will observe the behavior of the person and then analyze how effectively he or she is solving the problems and also how he or she is adjusting to their environment. By such observations, we will conclude if the person is intelligent or not. Historically, even before IQ tests were devised, there were attempts to classify people into intelligence categories by observing their behavior in their daily life. However, even now, other forms of behavioral observation are still important for validating classification based primarily on IQ test scores. That is, both the scores of intelligent tests and behavior in daily life play an important role in assessment of intelligence of an individual. Now, coming to the topic of measurement of intelligence, let us read the historical perspective. The English statistician Francis Galton made the first attempt at creating a standardized test for rating a person's intelligence. He was a pioneer of psychometrics and he applied statistical methods to study of human diversity and the study of inheritance of human traits. He believed that intelligence was largely a product of heredity. He hypothesized that there should exist a correlation between intelligence and other observable traits such as reflexes, muscle grip and head size etc. However, Galton did not find much success in discovering the measurement of intelligence. Later, a French psychologist named Alfred Binet together with Victor Henry and Theodore Simon had more success in 1905 when they published Binet Simon test which basically focused on verbal abilities. It was intended to identify mental retardation in school children. During the early 1900s, the French government asked Binet to help decide which students were more likely to experience difficulty in school. The government had passed laws requiring that all French children attend school. So it was important to find out a way to identify children who would need specialized assistance. Binet and his colleague Theodore Simon began developing questions that focused on areas not overtly taught in school such as attention, memory and problem solving skills. Using these questions, Binet determined which ones served as the best predictors of school success. He quickly realized that some children were able to answer more advanced questions that older children were generally able to answer. Based on this observation, Binet suggested that the concept of mental age, which is a measure of intelligence based on the average abilities of children of a certain age group. So in the year 1908, when Binet Simon scale was revised, they gave the concept of mental age, which is popularly known as MA, which is defined as a measure of person's intellectual development relative to people of his or her age group. A mental age of 5 means that a child's performance on an intelligence test equals the average performance level of a group of a 5 year old. Chronological age which is popularly known as CA is the biological age from birth. A bright child's mental age is more than his chronological age. For a dull child, mental age is below the chronological age. Retardation was defined by Binet and Simon as being two mental age years below the chronological age. In Binet's view, there were also limitations with the scale and he stressed 
what he saw as the remarkable diversity of intelligence and subsequent need to study it using qualitative as opposed to quantitative measures. American psychologist Louis Terman at Stanford University revised Binet Simon scale which resulted in Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale in the year 1960. It became the most popular test for decades. This was the formal beginning of measurement of intelligence. When we talk about measurement of intelligence, the most important topic we should address is the concept of IQ that is intelligent quotient. An intelligent quotient is a score derived from one of the several different standardized tests designed to assess intelligence. The term IQ came from German word intelligence quotient and was devised by German psychologist William Stern in the year 1912 as a proposed method of scoring children's intelligence tests such as those developed by Alfred Binet and Theodore Simon in the early 20th century. Louis Terman accepted that form of scoring, expressing a score as a quotient of mental age and chronological age for his revision of Binet-Simon test. The first version of Stanford Binet Intelligence Scales. IQ is computed by taking the ratio of mental age to chronological age and then multiplying by 100. For example, if a 10 year old child had a mental age of 12, that is performance on the test at the level of an average 12 year old, the child was assigned an IQ of 12 divided by 10 into 100 that is equal to 120. If a 10 year old child had a mental age of 8, the child's IQ would be 8 divided by 10 into 100 which will be equivalent to 80. Based on this calculation, a score of 100 where the mental age equals the chronological age would be average. As you can see in the picture, IQ scores are distributed in the population in such a way that the scores of most people tend to fall in the middle range of the distribution. Only a few people have either very high or very low scores. The frequency distribution for the IQ scores tends to approximate a bell shaped curve called the normal curve. This type of distribution is symmetrical around the central value called the mean. The distribution of IQ scores in the form of a normal distribution can be seen in this figure. The mean IQ score in the population is 100. People with IQ scores in the range of 90 to 110 have normal intelligence or average intelligence. Those with IQ below 70 are suspected to have intellectual disability. While people with IQ above 130 are considered to have exceptional talents. Therefore, all people do not have the same intellectual capacity. Some are exceptionally bright and some are below average. One practical use of intelligence tests is to identify people at extreme levels of intellectual functioning. If you refer to the table, you will notice that about 2% of the population have IQ above 130 and a similar percentage have IQ below 70. The people in the first group are called intellectually gifted, those in the second group are termed as intellectually disabled. These two groups deviate considerably from the normal population in respect of their cognitive, emotional and also motivational characteristics. This normal curve of intelligence indicates that all people do not have same intellectual capacity. Some are exceptionally bright and some are below average. Now, in the next section, we are going to discuss about the various types of intelligence tests. Today, measurement of intelligence has become more standardized and scientific by use of several intelligence tests. Measuring intelligence through these tests is useful in evaluating one's level of mental development, knowing the limitations, making predictions and guiding the individuals to profit more from scientific training effective schooling and also providing parental support to the child in learning to deal with the life situations. Intelligence tests are of several types. They can be mainly classified as either verbal or performance tests on the basis of nature of items used. Then 
on the basis of their administration procedure, they can be categorized as individual tests or group tests. Next, depending upon the extent which an intelligence test favors one's culture over another, it can be judged either as culture fair or culture biased. A test can be chosen depending on what is the purpose of the assessment. First, let us talk about verbal, nonverbal, or performance tests. An intelligence test may be fully verbal, fully nonverbal, or fully performance based, or it may consist of a mixture of items from each category. Verbal tests require subjects to give verbal responses either orally or in a written form. Therefore, verbal tests can be administered only to literate people. In this type of intelligence test, subject is required to use language while attending the test items. The example of verbal intelligence tests include general mental ability test by S. Jalota. This intelligence test comprises of five separate categories of 20 tasks each, namely vocabulary, classification, number series, analysis and also reasoning. Then next, we will talk about non-verbal tests. The non-verbal tests use pictures or illustrations as test items. The tests are printed on the paper and involved answering on the paper. They are paper pencil tests. Some of the examples of non-verbal intelligence tests are a part of Weschler scale. Picture arrangement where a series of pictures representing different stages of a particular activity were given in a scattered manner and person taking the test has to arrange them in the correct order. Another best known example of verbal intelligence test is Raven's progressive matrices, which is popularly known as standard progressive matrices. In this test, the subject examines an incomplete pattern and chooses a figure from the alternatives that will complete the pattern. While the emergence of non-verbal tests certainly help to overcome the limitation of undue emphasis on language, still it did require certain basic level of language that still left behind some limitation in measuring the intelligence of those children who did not go to school to meet the requirement of testing such children, performance tests came into existence. Then next, we will talk about performance tests. The performance tests require subjects to manipulate objects and other materials to perform a task. It involves activities that had to be performed by an individual with very little demand on language except to make a person understand the instructions as to what he or she is expected to do. A major advantage of performance tests is that they can be easily administered to people from different cultures. Now the example of performance intelligence test is course block design test. Here a number of blocks of different colors are given to the individual and the individual has to arrange blocks as per the designs given to him or her on a separate card. These designs increase in the level of difficulty from very simple to complex. Also those involving few blocks are simple designs and those which involve many blocks are complex. Then coming to next category which is individual tests and group tests. Individual intelligence test is one which can be administered to one person at a time. A group intelligence test can be administered to several people simultaneously. Individual tests require the test administrator to establish a rapport with the subject and be sensitive to his or her feelings, moods and expressions during the testing sessions. Whereas group tests, however, do not allow an opportunity to be familiar with the subject's feelings. Individual tests allow people to answer orally or in a written form or manipulate objects as per the tester's instructions. Whereas group tests generally seek written answers, usually in a multiple choice format. The best example for individual test is Weschler scale. This is the most widely used individual test. The Weschler's test has subsets and these subsets involve both verbal and non-verbal tasks. 
Then we take an example of a group test which is Otis Lenin mental ability test. This test is used to assess the abilities that relate to success in school. This test includes separate forms for elementary school, junior school and senior high school students. Next we talk about culture fair or culture biased test. Intelligence tests can be culture fair or culture biased. Many intelligence tests show a bias to the culture in which they are developed. Tests developed in America and Europe represent an urban and middle class cultural ethos. Hence, educated middle class western subjects generally perform well on those tests. The items do not respect the cultural perspective of say for example Asia and Africa. The norms of these tests are also drawn from western cultural groups. It is nearly impossible to design a test that can be applied equally meaningfully in all cultures. Psychologists have tried to develop tests that are culture fair or culturally appropriate that is one that does not discriminate against individuals belonging to different cultures. In such tests items are constructed in a manner that they assess experiences common to all cultures or have questions in which language usage is not required. Nonverbal and performance tests help reduce the culture bias usually associated with verbal tests. Now after going through the account of types of intelligence tests, we understand that many tests today use both verbal and nonverbal or performance tests depending upon the purpose of testing and the subject whose intelligence is being measured. Nevertheless, the intelligence testing has increased the scope of applied psychology. But what we have to understand is there can also be negative consequences of intelligence testing. Now finally, let us try to understand what are these negative consequences of intelligence testing. Intelligence tests which were developed by Binet originally for the use in the classroom situation have spread things very wide. Today, Intelligence tests are made use by variety of organization and agencies like army, hospitals, business and industrial organization and also many more such agencies for selection of personnel either for screening or even as one of the consideration for recruitment on the basis of individual's performance or IQ. Intelligence tests are also used to serve many other purposes such as counseling, guidance, self-analysis and diagnosis. But unless used by a trained investigator, they may be misused either intentionally or unintentionally. Some of the ill effects of intelligence testing by naive testers are poor performance on the test may attach a stigma to children and thereby adversely affect their performance and self-respect. The test may invite discriminating practices from parents, teachers and elders in the society. Next, administering a test based in the favor of a middle class and higher class population may underestimate the IQ of children coming from disadvantaged section of the society. Intelligence tests do not capture creative potentialities and practical sides of intelligence and they also do not relate much to success in life. Finally, it can be concluded that Intelligence can be a potential factor for achievement in various spheres of life. It is suggested that one should guard against false practices associated with intelligence tests and take help from trained psychologists to analyze an individual's strengths and weaknesses. Now let us summarize what we have learnt in today's lesson. Intelligence has always been an important and popular psychological construct. Psychologists have spent much time and effort in developing various tests of intelligence. Tests of intelligence apart from helping in the assessment of intelligence have also helped to modify and change the very concept and definition of intelligence. Intelligence tests have also played a very important role in development of applied psychology. It was Francis Galton who made the first attempt in finding out the intelligence of an individual. However, he did not find much success. It was Alfred Binet together with Victor Henry and Theodore Simon developed first intelligence test in Paris in the year 1903. 
It was intended to identify mental retardation in school children. In the year 1908, when Binet-Simon scale was revived, they gave the concept of mental age, which is defined as a measure of a person's intellectual development related to people of his or her age group. Then, German psychologist William Stern in the year 1912 has proposed a method of scoring children's intelligence tests such as those developed by Alfred Binet and Theodore Simon in the early 20th century. He gave the concept of IQ or intelligent quotient. IQ was originally computed by taking the ratio of mental age to chronological age and multiplying by 100. IQ scores are distributed in the population in such a way that scores of most people tend to fall in the middle range of the distribution. Only a few people have either very high or very low scores. The frequency distribution of the IQ scores tends to approximate a bell-shaped curve called as the normal curve. Thus, all people do not have the same intellectual capacity. Some are exceptionally bright and some are below average. Intelligent tests are of several types. They can be classified as verbal or performance tests on the basis of nature of items used. Then, on the basis of their administration procedure, they can be categorized as individual or group tests. Verbal test involves language, whereas non-verbal and performance tests used minimum language and involve solving the tasks. Individual test is a test which can be conducted only on one person, whereas a group test can be conducted on a group of individuals together. Depending upon the extent to which an intelligence test favors one culture over another, it can be judged as either culture fair or culture biased. A test can be chosen depending on the purpose of why it is being used.